Hey guys, this is Julian, and in today's video, we're going to learn how to strip silence in Ableton Live. Stay tuned. If you enjoy this video, consider supporting me on Patreon for exclusive perks, including project file downloads, tools for your creative process, early access to videos, and more. Click on the card in the upper right-hand corner for more information. So if you are brand new to Ableton and you're coming from a different DAW, or you're just bilingual in your DAW use, this is a feature that you might be missing. It's a bit of a head scratcher why it hasn't been added to live over the years. It's something that is industry standard at this point. So stripping silence in a nutshell, if you're unfamiliar or if you're just an Ableton user by default, is this really nice feature that you can do in Pro Tools and Logic and all of the other major DAWs where if you have a long stem, let's say you imported a vocal track and you have 90% of the stem is silence, and then you have one section of the, the take that is audio, you click a button, you set your threshold, and then boom, it deletes the entire section that's silence, leaving you with only the audio. It's essentially like a noise gate, but instead of just muting a section, it will literally delete the audio or trim the clip to the length of the audio. And this is really useful for a variety of reasons. One of which obviously is the optics. If you're in Ableton and you have a wall of stems that are at full length, it can become very cumbersome to look at, a lot of confusion. But if you trim those silences out, you have a very obvious idea of where the actual audio is taking place on each track. Second thing, more importantly and crucially, is that whenever you have audio playing, whether it's silence or an actual audio clip, the CPU is using the same amount of processing power. So all of that silence that's in your audio stems that you imported from your buddy who works in FL Studio and you wanna collab with is burning through your CPU use. So if you're on a lower end computer or a computer from a few years ago where CPU use is crucial, it's a really good idea to trim the silence in your stem. So historically, I've always done this like this. So if we're in Ableton here and you have silence, you want to remove it, we just highlight it, click delete, we have to zoom in a bit, you know, highlight and delete random chunks so that we can identify this is the audio, this is silence, and we're not burning through CPU. And like I said before, it's optically good to look at. You can see exactly where audio starts and where it ends, especially for things like drum transients and stuff. Sometimes it's hard to see when it's, it's very quiet. This is the old way of doing it. In other DAWs, all you have to do is click on the clip, set a volume threshold, let's say like negative 60, negative 70 decibels, press strip silence, and then it's gone. My buddy Matt Zoe, who is an incredible producer, you should go check out his music as well, he created this new Max for Live patch that will essentially add that functionality to live. You can go pick it up on his Gumroad if you wanna check it out for yourself. It's a really simple plugin, save you a lot of time if you have longer stems that you don't wanna individually trim. In essence, it's exactly what I was describing before in Pro Tools or Logic. All you have to do is assign your threshold. I actually really like the, the default that he's picked, negative 70 decibels. I've found really good results with this plugin with. You click on the clip and you click chop. You give it a second to think and then it will cut all of the silence out of your clips and then you will end up with just the audio left. And there you go. There's a few little errors here with, with random uh, noise spikes. He said, to me over a uh, Twitter DM that that's, that's a common issue. You get around it, I've found, just by adjusting your padding settings. So let me walk you through some of the settings here that aren't immediately obvious. Threshold, which is the decibel level at which, if it's beneath, it will chop and turn into nothing. You have chop, which obviously removes chunks and makes it blank. You have split, which cuts them into different clips. So instead of just deleting the section outright, it will make it a disabled clip, which also doesn't use your CPU. Let's go ahead and use that. And give it a second and it will cut all of those chunks we just saw and just disable them instead of delete. And you have trim, which basically, if you have an audio clip with audio on either side, let's say you have some at the end here and some at the beginning and it's just silence, it will trim the front and end to the closest audio. More useful for smaller clips, in my opinion, than uh, longer stems like this. I'll just demonstrate that for you again. Right here, trim. And it cuts the end and the front. You have padding, which essentially adds samples as a buffer to the front and end of any of your split clips. I find the most success with something like 2000 on either end. It's gonna add a barrier instead of cutting right to the line. It will cut 
with a little bit of space on the front and back so you can add your own fade if you want rather than cutting it too close and, and maybe cutting some of the crucial audio data that you don't want to remove from the clip. And then padding auto just defines the, the start and end sizes based on the clip size. You can find all of this information on the website, which is here. So this is essentially a mini manual for the device. I will link this in the description below and you can check it out for yourself. Super simple and easy as it should be, and it should be native in Ableton, even Matt agrees. So I actually quite like the negative 70 decibel threshold as a default, it's, it's really effective. If you have a particularly noisy or quiet clips, I guess you could probably adjust this threshold, but I found a lot of success at that default negative 70. What I will say is that you generally don't wanna make your padding too small. It really takes a lot more time to process and it runs into a lot of errors. As an example, if I set this to 100 uh, samples on either side, I just hit chop. Let's go ahead and see what happens here. As you can see, it chugs a little bit. That with a smaller sample size on either end, it, it, it really takes into account even the smallest nuances of the audio and tries to sever usable clips out of silence based on a noise floor and i just find it's really cumbersome and slow so i always leave the start and end high so if you want the cleanest result in my opinion the 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 place that i found the most success with this device and the fastest processing time turnaround is when i use this at like a 2000 to 3000 sample start and end buffer and then i use it at the default threshold just to demonstrate i can show you what it's like if we were to turn down or up the threshold let's say that we wanted it to be higher wanted to trim a little bit more out let's make it like negative 40. this will probably cut into our reverb tails on this wet stem but we'll we'll see how it goes so took a little bit longer that time but as you can see it did trim into the audio but I thought this is a really cool device and it's something that Ableton has really needed for a long time the coolest thing about Ableton is that you can really modify it to your needs uh, with max for live there's a lot of other really cool patches I did a review of another patch where you add basically a plugin UI to this effects window for third-party plugins if you want to check out my review of that you can click on the link in the upper right hand corner right now Matt Zo encouraged me <laughs> to, to mention in the video that it's not a perfect solution it's something that should be native to Ableton and it could be embedded into Ableton in a much better capacity but for the time being Something like this saves you a lot of time if you're ingesting 10 stems and you need to individually split silence for every single one. It doesn't work every time, but split silence doesn't really work <laughs> in any DAW every single time. So it's a really cool feature and I thought it was something cool enough to cover in a video like this. The one feature request I do have, I think, is if I had a function where you could put this on and then you somehow attach it to all of your tracks and you ran a sequence so it strips silence from every stem i think that would be really applicable to a lot of people who import a 30 stem session from another daw i think matt if you're watching that's a feature i think you can add in the future is maybe tethering these together but processing many at once it'd be really cool to go and sit and have a cup of coffee while ableton does the work for me of splitting silence from stems that is for like a client mix or something like that all right, guys, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. Let me know why in the comment section below. And if you have any ideas for Matt Zo, let him know in the comments as well. I'll try to get him over to him. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.